Ophelia. So glad of you to come down here and talk to me. I told you it was important. I just didn't tell you what it was about. I've been doing some researching, and this might not meet your approval, but I found out what I needed to know. You know, I've been reading your diary, and it turns out, after all this time that we spent together, after all this time, I thought it was just me and you. I thought our love was strong, Ophelia. And then I find out that you're in love with another man. Another man? You're in love with a, this, 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 Timmy? How could you do this to us, Ophelia? How could you? I would never betray you like that. You don't know how bad that hurts, Ophelia. You know what, though? It's all right. If that's who you want, if that's who you want, that's who you want to be with, that's fine. You could go be with Timmy. I can't compete with your cybernetic skateboarder in outer space. I just can't do it. And if that's who you want, that's who you can have. Fine, Ophelia. I'm done. Bronson Kilroy here. I'm doing a, a new documentary on the faces of Murgatroyd. In this documentary you'll see people you recognize, people you're familiar with, people you've seen on TV news and in the newspaper. So I hope you all enjoy my documentary, The Faces of Murgatroyd. Dear Diary, I think I am going to title my next book. How I went from being a lonely girl who hated men to a best-selling author and wife of a talk show host. No, no, that title is too long. Oh well, I'm lucky to have gotten this far. I have a religious fanatic televangelist for a father, heck, what am I saying, I had a religious fanatic great-great-great-great-grandfather too and an uncle who wrote a book about the history of Murgatroyd and a nephew who is a famous football player. Geez Louise, a girl has to do what a girl has to do. My name is Hugh Millett's son. I've spent the majority of my career at CRZY in Murgatroyd. I've covered everything from the shooting of Senator Quint to the burning down of the paper doll factory to the massive fire which burned all of Murgatroyd itself down. I covered the destruction of Murgatroyd by a strange wooden creature, the kidnapping of Sharon C. L. Lowe, and during that whole time period of unrelenting chaos, I also covered the Murgatroyd serial killer, a killer who appears to be back in our midst and killing again. Most recently I covered the assassination attempt on President Devane. A lot of news is tragedy and chaos, unfortunately, and I help our viewers, at least I hope that I do the average citizens of Murgatroyd I help them to maintain a level of normalcy and stability amidst all of the chaos. If they know that they can tune in every night and I will be there, it gives them a kind of security, if you would. A sense that even though the world is going absolutely haywire, there's one place they can go and the same guy will be there every time. If that's my small contribution to humanity then I feel like I've done my job. And truthfully, Ronson, I wouldn't trade this job for any other job in the world. Hang on just a second, Ronson. During this whole time period I was discussing we also saw Lieutenant Skidder's shot. We saw one Senate hearing after another, starting with the Vinci Neat Cosmetics hearings back when Senator Quint was still alive, then the hearings into subhumans, then the hearings into the energy time flux device, it just went on, and on, and on. And now we have the Mafia hair in Murgatroyd so watch out, that's another excuse to waste taxpayer money on yet another.
The castle of Baron Le Chance in 1532. And as darkness falls and the countryside is ravaged by a vampire plague, a young woman named Sharon Cielo is staying at the castle, not as a guest, but more as an experimentation. For you see, Countess Vincini is now visiting the castle from Italy, and she has brought with her her assistant, who dabbles in alchemy, and he is working on a new cosmetic, a new facial cosmetic, to which Sharon Cielo has consented to be the guinea pig. And so he begins his makeup experiment on this innocent young maiden, Sharon of Cielo. Sir, sir, what are those chemicals? That looks like paint. They look like paint. Are you certain of this? Are you certain that it is safe? Are you certain? Can you be sure? I am a little frightened, a little unsure. I just do not feel right about this. I am frightened. I am afraid. Now, 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 now. Hold still. You haven't the mind to understand what a great genius I am. I am an alchemist. I'm going to do you the greatest service that's ever been done to you. I'm going to transform your face into a work of art. These chemicals will enhance your face, they'll enhance your complexion. You won't just be a, a lowly peasant girl incapable of understanding these things. You'll be a radiant beauty when I'm done with you. Hold still. Be still. I'm applying it to your face now. When we're done and you look in the mirror, you'll see the great work of art I've done. You'll understand, you lowly peasant girl, Sharon of Cielo. DJ Monoper go dance here at the top of the hour with the top of the pops and we get this classic all time golden hit by Rita Redison and the Hesitations Clutching My Pearls. I'm clutching, I'm clutching, clutching my pearls. I'm clutching, I'm clutching, clutching my pearls, clutching, clutching. Clutching my pearls I'm clutching my pearls That guy ran out on me I'm clutching my pearls He left me standing Standing alone That guy walked out on me Clutching my pearls All the way home Clutching Clutching my pearls, I'm clutching, I'm clutching, clutching my pearls, I'm clutching, I'm clutching, clutching my pearls, I'm clutching, I'm clutching, clutching my pearls, clutching, clutching, clutching my pearls. of Baron Le Chance in the France of 1532 and a hurried rushed experiment has not gone well for a young young maiden Sharon of Cielo 
who allowed herself to be subjected to this experimental procedure. And darkness has fallen upon the castle of Baron Lachance. She wouldn't be still, Countess Vincini. It's not my fault. She wouldn't be still. I told her to remain still, but she kept moving around. She kept moving around. There's nothing wrong with my chemical concoction. The, the cosmetic I created is, is flawless. It, it has all the alchemical properties necessary to make her a raving beauty. I can't promise you what the outcome will be in the morning. I told her to get a good night's sleep, Countess, and in the morning we'll, we'll see how her face turns out. I sincerely hope you haven't damaged her face permanently with my being a guest of the most gracious Baron Lachance. If you have injured that poor damsel's face, I fear I will be forced to return to Italy from the sheer embarrassment of your recklessness. Be gone, I must have leave of you to collect my thoughts tonight. Go on, I am done with you tonight. I've seen you gazing upon her, Your Majesty, Baron Lachance. I, I know you care about her. I know you feel guilty and terrible that this this has happened to her face. I, but you're not responsible. You can't blame yourself, Your Highness. You, you can't blame yourself. But it is my fault. I allowed this to take place. And therefore I must remedy this, this dire situation. Yes, I do care about her. And yes, I have gazed fondly upon her many times, and she upon I, though we have not gone forward with our romance. Nevertheless, I owe it to her to restore her face, and there is only one way that I can make that possible. Much as I hate to do so, I am afraid I am having to leave tonight to go and deal directly with the evil King Devane. I have no no choice, Sir Frederick. I must do this. I must do this. Anderson Quint Jr., the son of slain Senator Quint. As you may recall, Anderson Quint Jr. ran a couple of years ago unsuccessfully for the position of Senator against Devane, and Senator Devane defeated him, as you may recall. Of course, as we all know, just last week, uh, just a few days ago, as a matter of fact, the now President Devane was shot uh, at halftime. It's a tragedy, and of course we know that he is going to survive and that he is alive in Europe, and apparently President Devane will be pulling through. And we take you now live to Anderson Quint Jr. and his statement to the press. Good evening, my fellow Americans. This is Anderson Quint Jr., the son of Senator Quint. I am here today to tell you that I have uncovered a proof that the President Devane was behind the murder of my father. Proof behind that President Devane was behind my father's murder. And I am telling you today that he finally got what he deserved when he was shot yesterday at the stadium. Well, he finally got what he deserves. What comes around goes around. I will be releasing proof not only of his involvement in my father's shooting, but also the crooked ways that he used to defeat me when I ran against him for senator. It's all coming together, folks. It will be released soon, and you shall see the crooked fraud that he is. Thank you and good night.
Now, it's your great kid, that little lady. It takes that time and effort fixing that for you. Not for you to just gobble with it and look at it. My, my, your little brother is gobbling his up while you just sit there and play with yours. Your father works long and hard to put good food on the table, and you, little messy, do not seem to appreciate it. What you want to grow up to be, little lady? From the poor choices in clothing that you make, one might easily draw that conclusion. Utter contempt on your part for your breeding and the dignity that one would to reflect when it comes to concealing her body. Now, your little brother is always dressed like the perfect gentleman and acts the part as well. He will grow into a scholar and a statesman just like his father. Why you, my dear, unless some things change drastically in your attitude and demeanor, will end up peddling your flesh on the street like those white trash whores. Once you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth and lack sense enough to be grateful for it and appreciate it. While hungry children are dining into dumpsters for rotting morsels, you turn your nose up at the delightful meals the cook prepares. Ingratitude is not becoming of the young lady, but I'm afraid it defines you all too well. I fear that if I open up the dictionary to the word, your face might very well be staring back at me. young lady. When I was a girl growing up, I had to wash my own clothes and hang them out to dry. You, my dear, have a maid who does that for you with the nicest appliances available. Make your own bed? Ha, huh, that's a laugh. You've been pampered and waited on the hand and foot, and it will come as a mighty rude awakening should you ever be forced to face the real world on your own. Work? Hey, uh, you don't know the definition of the word. You never lifted a hand to do anything. I suppose you're afraid you might break a nail. <laughs> 